Morgan vs. Fortage, the ultimate nightmare. A mother makes a secret videotape, trying to prove her daughter is terrified of daddy. A judge says it's self-serving theatrics. My child's been raped, and it doesn't matter how old you are. If you're one or two or four, it's the most below the belt accusation you could possibly make to a father to accuse him of raping, to have, of having incest with his own child. By now, most of you are probably familiar with Elizabeth Morgan and Eric Fortage. She is a prominent, successful plastic surgeon in Washington, D.C., who went to jail for more than two years rather than send her five-year-old daughter Hillary on a visit to her father, who Morgan says repeatedly abused their daughter sexually. Eric Fortage, an oral surgeon, also prominent, vehemently denies the charges and says his ex-wife is crazy. What you probably aren't familiar with are the facts in this case. The court record has been sealed for years, but next to me, more than four feet high, is most of the case. Tonight, Two people who have never before spoken about this case on television come forward, and we will show you videotape, part of this court record that has never been seen publicly before now. First, a little background. Morgan and Fortage met in October 1981. She got pregnant almost immediately, so they got married. Her first, his third. By the time Hillary was born in August 1982, they were already separated and soon divorced. In 1984, a court gave sole custody of Hillary to Elizabeth Morgan and liberal visitation to Eric Fortage. Before we begin, please understand that some of what you're about to hear is extremely sensitive and contains explicit language that may not be suitable for children. I was getting her ready for school and I was changing her diapers. And quite suddenly she became very upset and she said, I see my daddy's hiney, which was the fortage word for the genital area. And I said, does he have his clothes on? And she said, no. And then she said, when I see my daddy's hiney, I go like this. And she made licking noises with her tongue and mouth and was very upset and very scared. And, and I was horrified. It's the most heinous allegation. It's the most below the belt accusation you could possibly make to a father to accuse him of raping to have, of having incest with his own child. It's horrible. It's the worst. It's unimaginable. It's unconscionable. What did you do? The first thing I did, I just held her and um, just in shock, told her that it was a terrible thing and that I was going to protect her. I didn't know what it was going to take to protect her. It was January 1985. Hillary was two and a half and had just begun putting words together. Elizabeth Morgan brought her to see a child psychiatrist at Children's Hospital. At the same time, a social worker investigated. Her report indicates Hillary took an anatomically correct male doll like this one, identified it as her daddy, and placed the doll's genitals in her mouth, saying, Daddy's Heine. The social worker suspected abuse may have occurred, but Hillary was unable to articulate what happened. No further action was taken. I'm absolutely certain that Hillary was sexually abused. Could you be wrong? I don't know. Mary Froning is a clinical psychologist who specializes in child sexual abuse. She spent more than 100 hours with Hillary in therapy sessions like this one. She is one of four experts who evaluated Hillary and testified that Hillary was sexually abused. Can you answer yes or no? I can feel the dog. I know you can. Can you say yes or no today to his questions? When she was asked uh, about why she didn't want to visit with her dad or why she was afraid of her dad, her spontaneous talks had to do with things that he did that were bad things, she called them. Uh, one of the things she said was that he spanks me and chases me when I'm tired and licks me all over. And when I asked her to talk about where he licks her, she went to an anatomical doll and pointed to the hiney area, her um, word for the vaginal area. I've never abused any child, mine or anyone else's, ever in my life. The thought never occurred to me. Can you tell me why these allegations exist? That Hillary has said, my daddy poked me in the hiney. How do you know that this is true? What you know is that 
a certain so-called expert, such as Mary Froning and maybe a Dennis Harrison, has said that that's what Hillary told them. Or, a, or an Elizabeth Morgan said that that's what her daughter told her. There is no record that, my, that I know of where my daughter has said to any legitimate expert... You don't consider them legitimate? No, I do not. In fact, Hillary did make statements to a nurse and pediatrician here at Children's Hospital that led them to suspect sexual abuse. They recommended that Hillary's first therapist do a full sexual abuse evaluation, but he never did. In court, he said that Hillary was not sexually abused, but merely suffering an adjustment reaction to her parents' bitter divorce. But he also testified that he had no specific training in diagnosing child sexual abuse, and that Hillary was the youngest patient he had ever treated. The court ruled that sexual abuse was inconclusive. She was being destroyed, and it, it was horrible to watch. And my daughter had revealed rape to me at that point, my mother, the babysitter, a pediatrician to whom she also related sodomy. Elizabeth Morgan spent the next year and a half petitioning the Washington, D.C. Superior Court to keep Hillary away from her father. The judge, Herbert Dixon, declined to be interviewed. But according to the sealed court records we've obtained, Judge Dixon did not believe Mary Froning's testimony. He ruled that Morgan had failed to prove sexual abuse and ordered Hillary to go on a month-long visit with her father. There was no question that my daughter was being subjected to criminal rape every other weekend. Then how could you let her go back each weekend? Because I kept believing in the system and I followed every single step that every law-abiding parent is supposed to do when this happens. I went to the psychiatrist, I went to social services, the police did an investigation, the judges got involved, nobody protected my daughter. Every one of them turned their back. Dr. Morgan says she was desperate to convince Judge Dixon that Hillary really was terrified of her father. So she secretly made this videotape of Dr. Fortage and his parents arriving to pick Hillary up for the month-long visit. Elizabeth Morgan's father was also there. This tape, which has never been seen before on television, is part of the sealed court record. After watching this videotape, Judge Dixon concluded it was an unfortunate combination of reality and theatrics. He refused to watch any others, saying they were self-serving to Morgan. Please, 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 my daughter now. Please, please. Daddy, leave me alone. You know why? Why? I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit. Daddy, I'm a little bit. You're fine. Daddy, I'm a little bit. Take your hands off her. She doesn't want to go with you. Take your hands off her. Please, please, consider this child is not right. Please, it's not right. Here. It's not right. Isn't it possible that children don't want to go visit their dads or whatever, and they will cry, and that's the way they cry? You haven't seen me for some time. You know, a four and a half year old doesn't cling to their mom like that unless there's something going on. Um, well, you know, maybe because of a divorce, the child feels insecure and wants to stick with her mommy. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, that videotape is not proof of anything. You know, it's it's just another consistent piece of evidence that this child did not want to visit her dad. I'm here for my daughter. Okay. Now, I do want you to leave and call the police and do whatever you wish. Please. Now, don't... Oh! Get out of here! Come on, have it out. I don't want to have it out with anybody. Come on out here now. I thought you were leaving. Please, please, please. Come on, I'm going to leave. Don't attack me. I have no desire to fight. Please, please. What we don't know is what went on before I arrived. Do you think Hillary was acting everything out? I think Hillary was undergoing a lot of trauma. She was led to believe that to go with her daddy was going to be harmful to her mother, 
No, I, I'd never tried to make her play act. And anybody who sees these videos knows she's not acting. Four-year-olds don't act. It's hard enough to, to make a four-year-old say please and thank you, and I couldn't train Hillary to do that. Hillary never went on that visit, and Elizabeth Morgan went to jail for two days for contempt. Morgan was convinced that Judge Dixon was biased against her and would not protect Hillary. So she and her attorneys decided on a new strategy. The idea was to prove sexual abuse to a jury in a different court. Then Judge Dixon would have to reconsider. In February 1987, Morgan sued Fortage and his parents in a civil suit in Alexandria, Virginia. They countersued for defamation. By then, pediatricians on both sides had found new evidence of physical damage to Hillary's vaginal area, but they disagreed on what caused it. Dr. Charles Shubin testified for Elizabeth Morgan. There were physical findings in, in Hillary Fortage indicating penetrating vaginal injury. Um, to the extent that this is the child's sexual organ, to the extent that she had to be penetrated to do it, to the extent that, as I've described, it would not be reasonable to consider itself inflicted unless she had been previously abused, these are clear indications to me that this child has been sexually abused by someone. It's a pitiful shame. My daughter Hillary does have an injury. It's not the injury that was described by, uh, by uh, this, this uh, Shubin, but it's an injury nonetheless, and it's an injury which was absolutely caused by her own mother when she put Demetal spoons and large crayons into her genitalia. During the time that Hillary was two and a half and several months after that, she was verbal, but she often acted out what was being done to her because she didn't have all of the vocabulary to say it in words. And she would occasionally pick up crayons and reenact her father's rape using the crayon as an indicator of what and where he hurt her. One night when she was reenacting her father's rape with a crayon, I photographed her and sent those photographs to social services. Fortage's expert, Dr. Catherine DeAngelis, was shocked by the photograph she saw for the first time in court. She has never before publicly discussed this case. Those were very peculiar photographs. And what I observed in those photographs could have accounted for the physical findings that I saw. Why would a child inflict pain upon their own sexual organ? Especially a young child who has no adult sexual perception of the use of that part of their body. And my only conclusion can be that child had been molested. What do you think is going to cause the injury? That or an adult male raping a little two-and-a-half-year-old child. Really, what's more logical when you had the photographs right there? But according to Dr. DeAngelis, there is no way of knowing for certain what caused the injury. Yes, and if someone had asked me, could it have been due to uh, entrance by an adult penis, I would have said yes. The jury was not allowed to see the photographs, and we won't show them to you either. But even Fortage's attorney said Dr. Fortage's description of the photographs is exaggerated. The jury was also never told that several months after the photos were taken, Hillary was examined by a doctor and found to be normal. The most dramatic aspect of this case is not what the jury heard, which is a lot of conflicting expert testimony, but that the judge wouldn't let the jury hear evidence about Hillary's half-sister, Heather. He said to do so would be prejudicial to Dr. Fortage. Heather is two years older and Fortage's daughter by a previous marriage. She says she was also sexually abused by Fortage and a witness to her little sister Hillary's abuse as well. Heather also had similar vaginal injuries. Dr. Shubin had examined her without knowing the two were related, but was not allowed to testify about his findings. Were they consistent, these two sets of findings, with the abuse having been done by the same person in the same way? My answer would have been yes. The judge in the federal case excluded all of Hillary's statements, all of the eyewitness account and other verification of her older sister's rapes by Dr. Fortich, and the trial was a draw. In other words, we did not prove the abuse to the jury. Eric, however, did not prove that he was innocent. I was not found guilty of slandering him by labeling him a child rapist. 
15 months later, an appeals court overturned the decision. This time, Elizabeth Morgan won. The appeals court concluded that the judge should have allowed the jury to hear certain key evidence. The judges wrote that the evidence pertaining to Heather was relevant to Morgan's allegation, since only Fortage had access to both girls. They also wrote that Hillary's statements to her mother and the experts should have been admitted. They concluded that the testimony was sufficient to justify a finding that Hillary had been sexually abused. But Elizabeth Morgan's victory in Virginia came too late. Her strategy to force Judge Dixon in the Washington case to change his mind failed. He had already sent her to jail again for not allowing visitation. I felt supervised visits were damaging to her, but, but we could live with them, she could live with them. The judge rapidly expanded to unsupervised visits. She was delivered to her father over her protests after revealing her fear of being raped by her court-appointed lawyer. And she was later delivered to her father by a social worker from the Department of Social Services, again, over her protests. Morgan says the change in Hillary was obvious, and she continued to videotape Hillary before and after visits to her father as proof. But Judge Dixon never looked at these videotapes. During the spring and summer of 1987, Hillary's court-appointed lawyer petitioned the court ten times not to allow unsupervised visits, and ten times Judge Dixon denied her motion, even though he appointed the lawyer to represent Hillary's best interests. Morgan says Hillary was abused on three of the ten weekend visits she spent with her father. On one occasion, she brought Hillary to the hospital, where a pediatrician confirmed her vagina was inflamed and she had vaginal discharge. Police detective Sam Williams of the D.C. sex squad investigated, but later Judge Dixon would not allow him to testify to what Hillary told him. She then told me that her father had touched her in her private areas, and at that time, she pointed to her vaginal area. This is Williams' first television interview. He resigned from the D.C. police in disgust over this case. I felt that a sexual assault did occur, and I felt that her father did, in fact, commit the sexual assault upon that child. We had physical confirmation that she had further vaginal damage after the rape, she became suicidal. She'd been asking questions like, if I throw myself down the stairs, will I be dead? And when I talked to her about why you want to be dead, um, she reenacted a sexual abuse scene with her father. Judge Dixon increased unsupervised visitation, and the D.C. Court of Appeals refused to stop him and sent her back to her father after he raped her. I knew as soon as the unsupervised visits began, that I would have to hide her. She was begging me to hide her. Her choice really was I could either hide her or she would kill herself. And I hid her. It would seem a little hard to believe that a, a little girl of you, four or five would be begging you to hide her. Have you ever, I mean, I, I, I get upset by that kind of question because most people have never been raped. My child's been raped and it doesn't matter how old you are. If you're one or two or four and you've been raped by a man who's been choking and threatening to kill you, you're going to want to hide. It's a very primitive instinct. You don't have to be human to want to hide from danger. Little animals run for cover. My daughter was screaming for help. Elizabeth Morgan sent Hillary into hiding in August 1987 after Judge Dixon ordered her to go on a two-week unsupervised vacation with her father. The decision came after 17 more days of hearings. Court records indicate that Morgan presented numerous experts, including two psychiatrists, originally hired by Fortich, to do a psychological profile of him. One found him to have a narcissistic personality disorder, and the other wrote, his thoughts are not always in his control, and there is some suggestion that his sexual actions may not be either. He concluded that the content of Fortich's tests may suggest sexual ideation with young girls. A third psychiatrist hired by Morgan 
concluded that Fortich's psychological traits are consistent with traits found in sexual abusers. Dr. Fortich presented only one expert to refute Morgan's allegations, but he never evaluated Hillary. Fortich's case relied primarily on the testimony of his fourth wife, his parents, and nine friends and neighbors, who said that Hillary seemed happy when they saw her at his home. Children can act any way with a parent, whether they've been abused. They can act from terrified to incredibly loving and affectionate, and it proves nothing. Judge Dixon decided that the evidence was equal, that there was a 50% chance that the abuse did occur and a 50% chance that it did not. He ordered the two-week unsupervised visit by saying Hillary seemed happy on past visits and that they were in her best interests. To me, there's no reason why a child would say it was her dad. That's the hardest thing to say. It's a parent who abused me. And why would two children say that unless it were true? I never abused any child, either of my daughters or any child, period, in my life. I love children. Isn't it extraordinary that these two mothers are able to influence these two children to say the same kinds of things about you? You are trying, you know... And are successful at it. Off the record here for a minute, please. Eric Fortage threatened to leave our interview five times, but always came back. He said he did not want to answer questions that he felt put him on the defensive. He pointed out repeatedly that he is innocent and has taken and passed a police polygraph test. He also says he doesn't even know if Hillary is alive, and his only concern is for his missing daughter. So I, for the record, will tell you that I resent being tried before CBS. Currently, you are not allowed to have visitation with your older daughter. I'm not allowed by whom? The courts are totally, I've won every single action in both courts, all the courts. And but Dr. Fortage has not been allowed to see Heather since January of 1986. Her case was tried in a different court before a different judge. And while the evidence of sexual abuse also has not been proved, the judge ruled that, quote, there is as much evidence that the father didn't do it as he did do it. That is not to say there is no evidence of child sexual abuse by the father, because clearly there is a lot of evidence of it. He ruled that Fortage could not see Heather until her therapist approved. Recently, Heather, who is now nine years old, filed a $4 million civil suit against her father, alleging sexual abuse. Honor the children! Stop child rape! Morgan has become something of a cause celebre. Her supporters see her not only as a mother trying to protect her child, but fighting a system that is supposed to act in the best interests of the child. I'm asking you, the press, to come to our assistance. You're my last resort. Her You're civil rights are being abused. Resort. She's been jerked away, physically removed from all the people that she ever knew and loved, from her friends, her playmates, her school, her family, and put somewhere. Wait, how many times has her name been changed? She's safe. She knows she's safe. She's happy. She's healing. She remembers being raped by her father. She does not want to come home if it means having to see him now. After 25 months in jail, Elizabeth Morgan was released in September. It took a bill, passed by Congress and signed by President Bush, limiting incarcerations for contempt to 18 months in child custody cases. But Morgan versus Fortage is not over. Hillary is still in hiding, presumably with Morgan's parents, who disappeared at the same time she did. Morgan says she has no intention of bringing Hillary home until the courts will protect her. What does the future hold for you? Well, I hope it doesn't hold jail again. But I hope it holds protection for my daughter, who's still not safe. I am this little girl's father. I demand, I have a right to know that she's alive and well. That's all I'm asking. In Washington, D.C., Judge Dixon still has a standing order to find Hillary and turn her over to her father for an indeterminate, unsupervised visit. Elizabeth Morgan was married in December to her fiancé of three years. She's also signed a movie contract to tell Hillary's story. Morgan and her attorneys are trying to find a way back into court so they can get a new trial on sexual abuse. Eric Fortage is still looking for Hillary, and he has established a fund to help pay for the search. 
He is currently separated from his fourth wife. Hillary remains in hiding. Last August, she turned seven. I'm Connie Chuck. Tonight on Eye to Eye, a little girl torn apart by a famous custody battle finally speaks out. Dr. Elizabeth Morgan went to jail to save her child from alleged sexual abuse. I gave up everything I had to give up. Now, after eight years, Edie Magnus finds Morgan and her daughter aching to come home. Are all the things that your mom said were happening to you true? It's Eye to Eye with Connie Chung. Good evening. It was a custody case that captured the entire country. You may remember Dr. Elizabeth Morgan. She went to jail for two years to save her daughter from sexual abuse that she claims was committed by her ex-husband. To this day, he vehemently denies the charges. Tonight, for the first time, the child who is now 12 years old tells her side of the story. Edie Magnus traveled halfway around the world to find her. I did not abuse my daughter. He said her father was abusing her. If you're looking for scars or signs of trauma, something to reveal the truth about just what happened to this young girl long ago and far away. That little child loved me. I loved her. If she sees her father again, she will never recover. You won't find it in the eyes of this enchanting 12-year-old. What you'll find is a seemingly happy-go-lucky kid. Her name is Ellen, and that's her mother, Elizabeth Morgan, watering the plants and each other. Their laughter, a far cry from the television image we have of them eight years ago. Back when Ellen was called Hillary Fortich, when her terrible story was at the center of a tumultuous custody battle involving the ugliest possible charge, incest. Who can forget this chilling videotape? It was made by Elizabeth, a Washington, D.C. plastic surgeon, to document what she claimed was her daughter's terror of being turned over to her dad, Morgan's ex-husband, Dr. Eric Fortich. From the time she could talk, Hillary described oral sex and intercourse taking place during court-ordered visits in Eric's home, her mother said, a charge no court has ever affirmed and Fortich has always denied. Have you ever molested your daughter, Hillary? Never, ever, never. The couple slugged it out on camera and in the courts. Experts did find Hillary had suffered vaginal damage but couldn't agree on who or what had caused it. D.C. Judge Herbert Dixon didn't buy Elizabeth's story. In 1987, he ruled there was a 50-50 possibility sexual abuse had occurred. Still, Judge Dixon ordered Hillary, then five, to go on a two-week unsupervised visit with her father, an order her mother refused to obey. I want to bring Hillary home. Right. I love my daughter. I've offered a $50,000 reward to anyone who will bring my daughter back home Suddenly, the child vanished, spirited away by Elizabeth's mother and father. Judge Dixon threw Elizabeth in jail for refusing to disclose her daughter's whereabouts, saying he'd only let her out when she did. I came emotionally prepared to stay here until she was 18, because I had no choice. If she sees Hillary her changed her name to Ellen and went with her grandparents from country to country on a global run from the law. She was chiefly afraid. She had many, many fears. Antonia Morgan has never before spoken publicly about that time. She cries, I want to see my mommy. So I said, well, we can go back any time. I've just lit the telephone, but that will mean you'll have to go and see your daddy. And she said, no, 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 every time. Free Elizabeth Morgan now! Elizabeth Morgan's supporters considered her heroic, a mother being victimized for protecting her daughter. Others believed her vindictive and manipulative, a liar intent on hurting her ex-husband. Though she'd never been convicted of a crime, Morgan spent 25 months locked up, a record for contempt, until public pressure forced Congress to enact a law which led to her release. 
We found her. Let's bring her back home. Two and a half years after his daughter disappeared, Eric Fordich located her in Christchurch, New Zealand. The worldwide publicity had driven Antonia and her husband to seek refuge in this remote city of 300,000 people in a nation with 300 million sheep. So this is where the police came to your door when Eric yes. Fortage found you? Yes, it was. We were just going out of the door to the fireworks. Their hideout had been exposed. I just hope, that, hope I can see her. Yes. Fortage was on his way. How did you explain it to Ellen? Ellen knew all about it. She didn't need any explanation. She knew she'd been found. It's what she'd been afraid of all the time. She was terrified. Just grabbed onto our hands and said, you know, stay with me. Finally, just over four years ago, authorities in tiny New Zealand took control of the ugly international tug of war known as the Morgan Fordwich case. And Elizabeth got part of what she wanted. She retained custody of her daughter. And Eric was barred from seeing the child and limited to communicating with her later on only by letters and cards. But while Elizabeth and Ellen were safe, they were also stuck, forbidden to leave New Zealand without permission. Their passports kept under lock and key by the court. And the crucial question of whether Fordwich had committed incest remained unresolved. The judge here, far from convinced, made no finding the little girl was sexually abused. She'd been told she was so often, he said, she believed it, true or not. Something a lot of people wonder about, and that's how much of what you feel comes from you and how much is stuff that your mom has talked about to you that your grandma has talked about to you mm -hmm. 100 percent from me 100 percent from you mm -hmm. ellen morgan is old enough to speak for really herself now with her new zealand accent and she wants to talk though it's not easy for her this is our first chance to sort of get to ask you this directly uh -huh. about what happened in the past. Uh -huh. Are all the things that your mom said were happening to you true? Uh -huh. Yes. Your father did the things to you that your mom told people that he did? Uh -huh. This one here, when she was really, really little and she had um, just started to tell me what was going on. She's still in diapers. I get so mad. I get so mad that she had to go through that garbage. Elizabeth's photo albums capture lost time and lives torn apart. These are pictures from the day that Ellen and I got back together. It was a real neat day. And it was really, it was very hard for her to not have seen me for two and a half years. So I came with Barbie dolls and presents for her, but it was very artificial because that wasn't really what it was about. It was about my being her mother and our being back together again. And I took her to school and she walked me around the school and introduced all of her classmates to me because she hadn't had a mother. And uh, she did again. So. Yeah, mommy, mommy, look, my finger, my, look at this. <laughs> the three generations of Morgan women have been living here for nearly five years now, working hard to get past the past, carving out a new life in a country so far from home that today here is tomorrow there, and our winter is their summer. It's a beautiful country. It's a small country. The people are very nice, and our life is mainly um, Ellen's school, my work, my study, and sports. Ellen's a serious ice skater with big plans. And what is your goal? To go to the Olympics in the year 2000 when I'm 18. New Zealand is a healing place, Elizabeth says. Oh, here they come. I get the biggest kick out of seeing her happy. It is so great. A place where a child can recover. What would you like people to know most about what happened when you it were young? It wasn't nice. Probably that it was disgusting. Your dad hurt you? Mm-hmm. Is there any chance at all that you may have misinterpreted something your dad did? No. Any chance you may have imagined it? No. Any chance it didn't happen? 
No. Kids get trapped because if they're little and they say, I'm being molested, people say, well, they're too young to know. And then if they wait till they grow up and say, I was molested, people say, oh, it's an imaginary memory. But isn't it possible that what she relayed to you could have been the confused language of a of baby no. just starting no. to learn how no. to talk? No, no. Isn't it possible that therapists who questioned her over and over and over and over about this... No, it's not really the way know, it happened. No, this idea. It's, it's not the way it happened. First of all, there are problems, evident problems, before she ever learned to speak. Number two, as soon as she learned to speak, she was talking about stuff that clearly um, was very upsetting to her and sounded very sexual. And at the same time, her sister in another home with whom we had virtually no contact was saying the same stuff. Indeed, Eric Fortage's only other daughter from a previous marriage has filed a lawsuit accusing him of sexual abuse, although early on her story was inconsistent. She also asserted she witnessed Fortage molesting her half-sister Hillary. Fortage denied her charges, and evidence about the daughter's injuries was excluded from Hillary's trial in the U.S. I mean, how much more do you need? You've got two children, both saying the same thing. They both have the same physical damage. They come from completely different homes. Eric Fortich declined to speak with eye to eye. He has sued CBS News for defamation involving a previous story about this case. While he still maintains his innocence, and while many people still don't believe the allegations against him, it's clear this family has paid a price for what they believe. I gave up everything I had to give up. I mean, I lost everything. Including her livelihood, Elizabeth can't practice medicine here, and her loved ones. Darling, so tell me, sweetheart. Married to Paul Michel just after she got out of jail, Elizabeth sees him only during his brief visits from Washington twice a year. It's lousy for him. It's lousy for me, and it's lousy for Ellen, because she doesn't experience a normal home. Do you feel like you belong here? Mm -hmm. Would you like to stay here? Not really. It's okay, but not quite for me, for Eva. <laughs> In fact, Elizabeth is now pushing to bring her daughter back home to America. I mean, I think that Ellen's healing requires her to go back to America. Her way. Nice. Although that could land Ellen back in Judge Dixon's courtroom, where she might be ordered to see her father. Great. The judge told us it would be inappropriate to comment. Elizabeth wants her daughter divorced from his court, and she's trying to win support for that in the court of public opinion. I don't want Ellen forgotten, and I don't want people thinking that she's some a crazy brainwashed robot. She's a neat, normal kid who knows what happened to her. And so that's why we're talking to you. She says what happened to Ellen years ago isn't relevant. And perhaps she is right. Time may never reveal any great truths about this family tragedy. There are no answers, only a young girl's feelings. If I were a genie and I could grant you one wish, what would it be? Um, to go home safely. Home to America? Yep. What would it take for you to feel safe in America? Probably to have Eric on death row. If Eric <laughs> was on death row, she feels that much rage and hate. I don't, I think it's appropriate. I think that if someone did horrible things to you when you were little, really horrible, that you would not feel safe unless they were locked up. Now, does that mean Ellen wants him to be executed? I don't know, but I think that death row to her sounds like a pretty safe place for a dangerous guy to be.